Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. I was tagged in a video and I'm going to be going over my first knife, my current knife, and my future knife. So I was tagged by Jamie Schmatzer. His YouTube page is JW Apothecary. Uh, he's doing a follow-up uh, from a video by Dave Pearson, uh, Really Big Monkey One. He kind of left an open-ended tag. So whoever wanted to uh, follow up with this or was more than welcome to. So Jamie jumped on it and uh, hit me up with a tag. So the first knife that I received that wasn't a here's a knife and then I'm going to take it back from you because I had quite a few of those when I was a kid uh, was actually a folding knife that I no longer have. My dad apparently had the concept of I'm going to buy a starter knife, something that they can lose or break or whatever. I wanted a buck knife. I wanted a buck 110 just like my dad had. So he bought me a generic version of a buck knife. Uh, it had a case that didn't quite fit the knife very well. Uh, it had such a real bad action on it that I couldn't push the lock down to unlock it. So it was a horrible piece of crap knife. Uh, I no longer have it. I didn't give a crap about it as soon as I got it. I wanted a buck. I didn't get the buck. Uh, so whatever. That's just the way it works when you're kids. So one of the first knives that I received that I actually could carry and possess uh, was this knife here. This is an Imperial stainless steel lockback. And it had a little nylon sheath with it. I was horrified when I started getting all stained up from skin and game. Uh, now it's no big deal. But this was such a shiny, nice new knife. I got rabbit guts on it and scrubbed and scrubbed and couldn't get them off. But this knife was uh, pretty, pretty consistent with the mid-80s knives. Everybody seemed to have a, a folding knife on their hip most of the time, at least most of the adults that I hung out with hunting or shooting or doing whatever. Uh, again, this wasn't the prized Buck 110 that my dad had, but it was a pretty good substitute. It was pretty sharp, pretty lightweight. The plastic handles were pretty, uh, pretty spiffy and new at the time with these awesome finger grips. This knife got relegated to a few kits. That's probably one of the reasons I knew where it was. I had it tucked into a kit as a backup cutting tool, and lo and behold, this knife is probably 35 years old, I would guess, and it's still kicking. So as a kid, I read every survival magazine, article, book, whatever. It was just something I did, still enjoy it. And I always wanted a fixed blade knife. This was one of my first straight blade knives. I believe this was my first. This was a uh, S-Wing. It came in a kit. This was in a hardware store, and it had a, uh, an axe with it. The axe is still made, kind of, sort of. Looks very similar to the one I had. But uh, this is kind of similar in pattern to a Western knife. It's actually marked S-Wing, I believe. But there was a whole bunch of knives this style. This is like a stacked leather sheath or a stacked leather handle. Pretty cool. It's still a nice knife. This is a classic of, uh, like I said, the old Western knives or, or something similar to that. Had a clip, had a blood groove to it. The, the handle cracked through and it started to get wet. And again, that was just horrifying to me that this pretty knife got all messed up. But again... That's what happens with knives. They're just tools to get used. And after all these years, I've still got it. I don't ever use it, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty dull. It got some corrosion on it because this is a carbon steel knife and I was just a kid. But uh, somehow I managed to not destroy it. I marred it up pretty good, but it's still in one piece. All right, so my current knife. I am a knife maker now. And this was one of my own designs. And it's designed for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is a super ergonomic handle. And most importantly, this is a three inch blade. So this is super short, but it's uh, a legal knife for me to carry at work. So that's one of the main reasons I have this knife is because I can always have it on me. Now, because I always have it on me, uh, you just use it for different tasks. This is eighth inch, 1095, Micarta handles, scanny grind. Super sharp, awesome knife, love it. I've been carrying it for, let's see, about 10 months now, I believe. And I just love it. This knife in one shape, way, or form is always on me. So I don't carry a belt knife all the time. Uh, just for legality reasons, I don't do it. So this three inch blade with a full handle 
So this is handle is as large as my hand, exactly. Uh, this fits down into my pocket. So there is no uh, belt loop on this sheath. So I've got an Ulta clip instead. So what this does is this clips onto your pants pocket or your jacket or whatever you happen to be clipping this thing to. And when you clamp it down, it is on forever. So the theory with this is I could clip it into the, my jeans pocket or my cargo pants or whatever I'm wearing, just like a standard one hand opening knife. And then I've got a fixed blade, three inch Scandi grind knife that works fine for multiple purposes, either utilitarian purposes or in the woods. So I'm gonna call this all one knife. So this particular knife, this is my Kataba. This is what I've called this knife. I made this exact same knife with an electrical blade on it. I'm an electrician, so when I switch clothes and put on my work clothes, I take this one off, and I've got one very similar to this. This is uh, for somebody else. But it's the same ergonomic handle, same three inch blade and this is regulated i am allowed to carry a three inch hook bladed knife so that's kind of why i stuck with this three inch and uh it's just very comfortable it's always with me and if i've got my hook knife at work or i've got my straight blade in the field both knives are identical both knives feel the same to me and uh, i don't have to worry about orientating the knife blade up or blade down so taking that one step further I took my same Kataba and I made a stainless steel version. So they're identical. This is a G10 handle. I actually wore this uh, down on my Florida Keys trip. I went with hollow pins on this because I have multiple sheaths for this knife. I have a dive sheath as well. And I've got a quarter inch uh, pin that goes through the handle and blade and locks the knife into the sheath so I don't have to worry about it when I'm in the water. So again, I've got the same Ulta clip. This one's got a little bit of rust on it from salt water, but I can clip this into a life vest. I wore it in my swim trunks, a uh, heck of a knife. So because I am so comfortable now using a small knife, I went from five inch range to five inch to four inch knife, and then I've dropped it down to three, and there's very little I can't do with a three inch knife. Just to test myself and to keep my skills up, I'm going to go with larger knives as my future knife. Uh, this is a Philippine style bolo. So this is probably uh, maybe a 9, 10 inch blade on this thing. Attended a intro to bladesmithing workshop uh, taught by James Rodebaugh, a uh, master bladesmith. And I actually won his demo knife. He had like a raffle kind of thing at the end. So this or something very similar to this is going to be my future knife. Uh, they're very similar. I asked him how do you make one and he showed me specifically and I didn't quite get it right. You can see his is a little bit different to mine. I did want more of a, a recurve in my blade, uh, but this is, uh, this is his. And it looks very, very similar to mine, but you can't really see the differences on camera. His is absolutely wonderful. That's his right here. Just perfect, just perfect. Love it. So I put scales on my bolo and took it with me to Florida. Worked just great. Uh, I didn't want to take gems down to the salt water, so I have not put scales on it yet. I'm gonna do that probably this week. And then I wanna really own this knife. I want to take this style and format it for me. Uh, I'm a little bit taller than Jim, so this might be a little bit small for my hands. It feels small, but it's hard to tell until I get scales on it. This is about, you know, maybe a nine and a half, ten inch blade. The whole knife itself is about 15 inches overall length. But I want to not only master making this knife, I want to master using this knife. I want to be able to use this for all tasks and uh, really learn what makes this knife tick and how it's going to work in my environment. So once I get a handle on Jim's knife and then start to uh, make copy after copy and small minor change after minor change till I get the handle exactly the way I want it, the blade shape exactly the way I want it. When you start looking up these Filipino bolo knives, they were made in villages so there is no set pattern. Everybody's there's a little bit different. So I wanna really hone in on mine. Uh, Jim actually was a Marine and went through the Jest School 
in the Philippines in probably the early 90s, I believe he said. So he learned firsthand how to use these from the, uh, from the jungle instructors. Uh, we hit it off during class and I want to push this knife to the limits in the Easter woodlands and see how it works. All right, so that's my first, my current, and my future knives. Until next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.